deep inside the heart of almost every Gen Xer is a deep-seated feeling of nihilism. Why? <laughs> All right, Margie, in my eternal quest to find everything relevant to Generation X, mm -hmm. I came across this article in Upworthy. Five Gen X values from the 90s that can save today's world. What do you think about that? I'm in the interest of saving the world, and I think we're going to do it tonight. Let's do it. And you can start by hitting like and subscribe. That's right. You can make that first baby step. Baby step. I'm Dan. This is Margie. We're the Gen Xers. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, I love the, the tagline of this article, which is, we're bringing whatever back. Well, whatever. I'm not going to read the whole setup. It's kind of long, and you can go check it out here on Upworthy. But uh, this one paragraph kind of sums up the overall argument if you want to read it for us, hon. Mm -hmm. We didn't trust the corporations that laid off our parents or gutted their pensions in the 80s. In fact, everything corporate was predatory. We didn't have a lot of faith in family values because we were the first generation raised by single parents or in daycare, and we didn't care much about politics either. Back in the 90s, Gen X's aversion to politics was historic. And if you need proof of that, look, here's the article. Politics for Generation X says so in the Atlantic. You, you gotta know it's true. Yeah. Let's look through the five values of our generation. Gonna save this old world. Mm -hmm. Five buying vintage items. So I'm gonna agree or disagree if these are. Sure. I mean, are, you, are we going to check for validity here? Yeah, let's talk gonna... about how real this is. Okay. We don't know who wrote this. It could be a millennial, for all we know, a boomer. <laughs> right. Todd Perry could be 14 years old. I right. don't know. <laughs> right. Could be 90. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so number five is, and I'm guessing we're going from five to one. Number five, buying vintage items. We had to. Had to, yeah. Like, you were the youngest, so you probably got a lot of hand or oldest, so you didn't get hand downs. Mm -mm. I got hand downs more than thrift store stuff. But I got hand downs from stuff that came from the yard sales or thrift stores. More yard sales back then. To come from the country, there were no thrift stores, just. So you got the hand me downs of the hand me downs. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I guess I started the hand me down chain, if you want to call go it to that. Your right. Sister and... I guess I was. Um, perpetrating the trickle-down theory. So trickle sorry to my yeah. siblings. Okay, I did not mean to perpetrate that upon you. But yeah, no, we, we had to do this. Uh, hilarious 90s uh, pop culture misstep. Uh, high fashion grunge. Yeah, hundreds of dollars for ripped pants, which we just had because we had to, I guess. Uh, all that said, I will give thrifting a thumbs up. It's fun. Four, corporate skepticism. It's extremely hard to not be, I guess, you know, touched by everything that corporations do right now. If you're living in this world right now, today, and if you're watching this video, <laughs> yeah. you're definitely being influenced by corporations left and right. So it's really hard to not take part in that yeah in like the <clears throat> 70s we saw something or we're exposed to like something like 500 advertisements a day now it's closer to 10,000 that doesn't mean we stop and pay attention don't mean we stop pay attention to everyone but they're there everywhere probably on this YouTube video yeah, and etc mm -hmm. if you are a millennial uh, or after um, up until you guys we were the most advertised to generation in history um up until and and then we broke all kinds of records so, to pave the way for you guys so you're welcome yeah. i and i'm so sorry we tried to stop it we, it we couldn't it was a snowball we rolling. were on the right track till social media came along yeah yeah because you know we we wouldn't we we tried to not take part in as much of the corporate greed and stuff as we could but i mean the supreme court decided that they're people uh, corporations are people which is, these days we don't even know if they're not we only know if people are people with all the ai and deep fakes and all that I, I don't know right also this thing says you should read a book by brett easton ellis and said i'm here to tell you don't all right not if you like good books <laughs> 
Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just two, say whatever. Two of the most popular Gen X phrases were whatever. Okay, yeah, sure. And then talk to the hand because the face don't give a damn. I never said that. I never heard, heard or knew anyone to say it, but I did see it on a lot of coffee mugs and shirts and stuff. Or on, Jerry Springer said it once. Or on, Yeah, he did. That was going to say a bunch of uh, sitcoms, I guess, is where I... Because I didn't really... You know, people didn't just walk up to each other and do that. Oh. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. I don't remember Gen X having favorite sayings. We're again... Where's over. the beef? Yeah, anything... Like, I don't know. Anything where ev everybody was doing something together, that wasn't cool. <laughs> Back in... <laughs> I don't know why we were just, we didn't do things as as a group very well. We also live in an era where many seem to be addicted to outrage. And that is true. Mm. And here's what I would say about just stop. Just stop being mad. Yeah, you can. You awesome. you absolutely can. Yeah, just stop caring. Why do you care? Well, and I was going to say, uh, you know, stop being mad for sure. That would be great. Um, but also, if you really want to stop, Caring about, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, 175 people that you kind of know but don't really know, but you get their feed every day um, in favor of, you know, the 20 to 50 people that you live with, work with, uh, walk down the street with. For my like case, I would, three. I would totally, you know, be in favor of the latter over the former. Number two, bring back snobbery. Now, I kind of disagree with this one. It says good taste, now, but I, I kind of agree too. Good taste used to matter. In the 2000s, the millennials decided that people have the right to like what they like, and it's worse to judge someone's personal taste than to have bad taste. What do you think about this? I think just like now, I think there were snobs. I don't think in general... Like, I don't remember many people going, oh, no, no, you know, that, that film, what are you doing? You know, or whatever. I remember lots of fun debates on what was better or who was better or what not, but not shaming people over what they like. Yeah. I don't know what they're talking about, I, really. I guess I understand what they're talking about here, but also, too, there really was snobbery back in Gen X days. Um, and I would say don't bring, you know, the social snobbery back because there there really was, you know. Oh, the cliques? The the cliques and the, you know, the mean girls and the I mean, I assume snobberies. there still is if you're in high school. There is. I think it's much less so now, I would think. I, I think know. just, I don't know. I hope I, so. Who knows? I yeah. think all the bullying now happens online, doesn't it? Maybe. I don't know. I hope not. Me too. Hope it happens face to face, but bullying is supposed to happen. Right. G can we just connect like that again? Mono e mono. <laughs> oh, no. No, no bullying. Have you ever seen the classic movie Three O'Clock High? I have, but it's been years and years and it's years. It's a good bullying movie. Here's another good bullying movie My Bodyguard. Have you ever seen that one? Go watch that, kids. That's a, that's a really great one bullying movie and has a great message about friendship. And finally, number one, and I've been preaching this quietly to myself for years, political apathy. America's political divide has calcified over the past decade because more and more people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh my God, people need to stop caring so much about politics. They really do. It's insane. Like you, oh, I understand caring about issues, war, poverty, this and that, the whatnots, the biggins. You don't have to know everything everybody said all the time that you can be in a constant state of pissed offness at people. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Just the anger and vitriol over stupid politics, man. They're all out to get us. Every one of them. I say along with maybe turning <clears throat> off your social media and that kind of stuff would be maybe getting off of media as well. Um, if we continue to run on a loop the amplifications of these bad actors of these um you know snake oils salesmen or whatever or even just of 
good people who maybe made mistakes and are just we're on a loop seeing it over and over again. We don't need that. And we don't, like you said, we don't need to know every little thing that happens. God, I used to have a politics problem. I started out my morning with Morning Joe. Went from there. As soon as you step back from it, you can see where every news organization is just biased in either what they're reporting, if not, or actually how they're reporting it, but even more so in what they're reporting. One side report the stuff that makes the other side look bad and vice versa, more so than actual lying. It's just... It's very much amplified. There, you know... There really is, there really are very few examples of just pure journalism, just people out there giving you the facts. This is what happened. No opinion whatsoever. That is what journalism is and should be. And it's produced to keep you on high alert all day. All of it. It is. That's what keeps you coming back in the ratings. Like used to be a special news break or breaking news was reserved for actual breaking news, some tragedy or whatever happened. Now, watch MSNBC and every segment is breaking news. Oh, my God, everything's just set up to be the end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's all clickbait. It's all clickbait. You know why? Because they have to get those 10,000 ads in. they got to get those 10,000 ads in to you. My God, back in the day, you could be friends with someone for 10 years and not know who they voted for and not care. Yeah. Yeah, I still don't know who many of my friends voted for. I still don't even know who the president is. All right, Margaret, you got anything else to say? These youngsters out there saving the world. I mean, yeah, I would would maybe, you know, you could use this list as a guide. I would definitely use this list as a guide, except for number two. I don't really Mm -hmm. like that, but um, yeah, take a chill pill, as this article says. Yeah, take a chill pill. Mm-hmm. Peace. Hit like and subscribe. Don't chill pill on that. Yeah. Buddy. Breaking news. You better hit like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> My God, if you don't, the uh, political party that you disagree with will get in power. That's right. Whichever one it happens to be. Hit like and subscribe. We're with the Quick. party you like. That's right. So hit like and subscribe. That's right. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>